paz do Senhor Jesus, em reverência à palavra do Senhor, convido que as que puderem estarem de pé. Invite those who can to stand up in Zechariah, Old Testament. Old Testament, chapter 9, Zechariah 9. Versículo 12. 12. Pode abaixar um pouquinho, tá? É alto. 9, 12. Aí, tá bom. Nove doze, e diz assim a palavra do nosso Deus: <risos> Voltai a fortaleza ao preso de esperança. Também hoje vos anuncio que vos recompensarei em dobro. Te adoramos, Pai, bendizemos teu santo nome. Já pelos instantes temos desfrutado de comunhão com teu Espírito, pelo sangue de Jesus, que temos colocado, Senhor Deus, em tua casa, em tua presença. E suplicamos, Pai, que na tua palavra também se venha abençoar o teu povo, a tua igreja que aqui está. Oramos no nome santo do Senhor Jesus. Amém, os irmãos. É, Podem se sentar. In the books of Psalms, the Lord says that, the Bible says that God is our refuge and fortress, help very present in the moment of anguish. With him we will never be afraid. Even if the mountains may move and the waters may be perturbed, he, the houses will not be shaken. The text of which I've just read speaks of, of of people that were free and at a certain moment of their lives they were sent to prison. They lost their liberty. And those people that lost their liberty and now stopped being free in, and became slaves. One day, as I said, they were free. And where was this pla the place where these people have absolute freedom? It was in the fortress. It was in the presence in the presence of God. But when these people were in the presence of God, they didn't walk according to the commandments of God. And God, for many times, spoke with these people. The Bible says that God speaks with men once and twice. At night, when the, they fall asleep deeply, God speaks with men. And probably these people that were in prison had already heard Jesus, uh, God speaking. They had enjoyed all the fortress of the stronghold. They had already been in the presence of, of the Lord. But they didn't hear the advice of the Lord for their lives. In the first chapter of Hezekiah, in the beginning, the Lord speaks with men. Convert right now. It is necessary for you to convert right now. What is it to be a convert? It is to change, change direction. It is to take another direction. It is to um, have a direction in our lives. It is to convert, it is, in other words, is to accept what God has uh, is making available to that person. And if we look 
the things that God has has been made available to our lives. When we pick up the first Bible verses, we see that what God made available to man. God created heaven, earth, gave shape to the earth, created all the entire nature, created the entire structure, so that man could live and live freely, and more than that, to be have command over all things. God placed man in a place of command over the entire earthly kingdom. But now this man that was created to the image and similitude of God to uh, be in control of the entire kingdom that God had created, now man is being dominated. Man no longer had freedom because man was now was being controlled. His freedom was taken away from him. And because the freedom was taken away from that person, it was because that person stopped taking advantage of the entire project that, that God had for that person's life. And when we read the Word of God, we see this, that when, when man takes advantage of the entire project of God, when man pleases God, man prospers. Man is free. Man is happy. Man sows and harvests. Man works and receives the wage of, for his work. But when man deviates from the project of God, everything ends up going wrong in their lives. And here the people, they were in Babylon. The people was imprisoned in Babylon. They had lost their rights. Why? Because they stopped giving heed to pay attention to the project and to the Word of God. But God knew that all of it was going to take place because God is God. So then God prepared for man. Now the return to His presence. And when you are a slave, you have no control over your freedom because you have no freedom. But the Bible says, my brethren, that if the Son will free me up and free us up, we will be truly free. So then God provides the return of man back to the fortress. The return of man to the stronghold, to the protected place, to a place of peace. Because the fortress here was connected to Jerusalem, the holy city, the city of the great God. As Martin Luther says, Sean Castle is my God, is our God. But now the situation is different. They left the fortress, they left their stronghold. And now they were imprisoned in the Babylon. And the word says, and God says, go back to the fortress. Return to the stronghold. Because they were imprisoned. Not only geographically speaking, and they were being prevented from coming to Jerusalem, but they was were also imprisoned in their hope. They didn't have any hope. The hope was that they themselves would be able to do something to get out of that situation. Many times we are in a situation and our hope is that we are going to be able to resolve or that someone will be able to resolve this problem for me. And there may be an intervention, intervention and something that may happen and we end up being tied up to those things. Many times we, we tie ourselves up to pride. 
I left the fortress and now I'm in prison. But now I don't want to go. I want to go back because um, I'm proud. They remain suffering. They remain perishing. But the advice of the Lord at that moment is to go back to the stronghold. But how am I going to go back? How am I going to return to the stronghold if I am imprisoned? But the Lord says, He speaks of a, of a blood pact. He speaks of a covenant. And many times, men forget about this, about this covenant, about this pact, about this alliance of man and God. They forget about the great love of God towards their lives. And at that moment, he's saying, go back to the fortress. Because this hope that you have is not real hope. Because you alone will not be able to return. We are not going to be able to get out of the situation which you are. We are not going to stop being a servant of Babylon. And the Bible says, my brethren, that the hope of the final end. And many times we live like this all the way to the end. Tied up to a hope, uh, connected to something that is not really real. That cannot do anything for our lives. But the Lord says, go back to the stronghold. And my brethren, the Lord has a resource to allow men to go back to the, sh the stronghold, to the fortress of Jesus, so that man can no longer be a slave and be free once again. God has the resource. Now God, is, God does not force anyone, but God gives you an advice. He's advising you, go back to the stronghold. The prodigal son, he left this his father's house. He had everything there. He ate and he, he drank. He had everything fine. But he made the decision to leave the house of the Lord, the, uh, this father. And we all know the result. But one day, he thought about returning to the ha house of his father. And this decision only can take is me. Well, you, my brother and sister, that is many times is con attached to clinging to a hope or something that is not going to happen. Maybe you think that our, strong, uh, our strength, our intelligence, our relatives, or maybe the government is going to take me out of the situation in which I am, and it's not going to happen. You are tied up to a false hope. But the word says that if Christ is in us, there is a different hope because it's a hope of glory, a hope of victories, hope of peace. It's hope that everything is going to change in our lives. Go back, return to the stronghold. My brethren, you just need to return. And what is the way? You already know the way. The prodigious son, when he decided to come back, he returned, he knew the way. When the prodigious son made the decision to return, the father was already on the, on the way, waiting for him. And today, my brethren, it's, it's not different. The desire of God is that you return, and that you return for the presence, into the presence of God. You already know the path, because Jesus is the way. He is the pact, the covenant, is the agreement of God with our, your life, with my life, and our lives. Jesus is the expression of the love of God because a pact, a, an alliance, a covenant was made between God and Jesus to save me, you, and each one of us to bring us back once again to His presence, to the presence of God. Because the blood of Jesus purifies us of all our sins. The people was imprisoned in Babylon because they sinned against God. 
But on the day that they made a decision to return to the presence of God, the blood of Jesus purified them of all their sins. Because it says, I wrote to you, because of the blood of your covenant, I removed, I took away your prison, prisoners. They were in the prison and tied up in, in a burial hall. Many times we are tied up in a tomb. In a situation that has no solution. We seek resources, a way to get out, but we never get out. Because the situation only God can get us out of, only God can deliver us from. That's why God, God says, go return to the stronghold. My brother, the situation not doing is not going well. If you are tied up to many things, return to the stronghold. Return to the presence of God. Go back to the house of God. You, you, your prisoners of hope. And the Lord also says, even today I would declare, because God wants you to return today to His presence. Even today, if you hear God's voice today, don't harden your heart, because the project of God is for today, for right now, for this exact moment. Because today is the day in which you, you need the blessing from God. Today is the day in which God wants to deliver you. Today is the day in which God wants to save you. Today is the day in which God wants to manifest His love, His mercy to your lives. It's today. It's not tomorrow. Tomorrow doesn't exist. It's today. In the book of Exodus, chapter 8, the Lord had sent ten plagues against the Egyptian people. And one of the plagues was the plagues of the frogs. And the frogs, they entered into Egypt and jumped up on the pans and the beds and the tables and the, on the roads. It, they, the frogs were everywhere. It was a real plague. It was a difficult situation. No, the gypsies were going through that misery, that difficult situation. The plague of the frogs. But Pharaoh called Moses. He was imprisoned in that situation. He was the king of Egypt. He had valiant soldiers, commanders, valuable men of war. He knew that he, with all of it, he could not have a solution for this. So then he called Moses. And now Moses asked a question to that man, to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And the question was the following. And what day you want to get delivered from this? What day? In what day you want to get to be delivered from those frogs? In what day you want to have your house clean and your kingdom clean? In what day you want to have peace and be delivered from all those things? And he could have said, "Oh, today, right now." And you know what he said, my brother? Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow. And many times, man is like this, in that situation, like Pharaoh in Egypt. They are imprisoned in a situation, in a tomb. They are tied up to a false hope. They have the opportunity to be delivered. They have the opportunity to be saved. They have the opportunity to be blessed. They have the opportunity to, to be healed. They have the opportunity to, be, to prosper, to be happy, to have peace. They have everything at their disposal, but no, I'm going to leave this for tomorrow. In Brazil, they said, don't leave for tomorrow, like what you can do today. My friend, the Lord's not saying today, go to, come back tomorrow. There's a song that says, tomorrow may be too late. Tomorrow may be too late. And I'm going to tell, tomorrow doesn't exist. Um, almost 52 years old. I've never seen a tomorrow. I've never seen a tomorrow. It's always, I always see today. It's always today. 
So the project of God is for today. The Lord says, come back fortress and hope you're... Even today I declare that the proclamation of the Lord is the gospel. It's a good news. Many times, my brother, you are responsible for uh, carrying bad news. You are attached to false hope. You are in a tomb. You are in a complicated situation, difficult situation. And you think that you are going to receive yet another bad news. The prodigious son also thought like that. When he left the house of the father and when he decided to come back, he, s he thought, oh, I want I uh, want my father to hire me as just a uh, 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 daily worker. And But when he returned, he got a good news. The father embraced, the father kissed him, gave him new shoes, new clothing, a ring on his finger, and made a, a big party because his son had returned to the house of the father. He received good news there. Probably... He thought, if I knew that this situation was going to be that good, I would have returned earlier. But he was attached to a hope of a pride. He was tied up to a situation that lived in the house of the father. Well, I did this, I did that, so the, my father is not going to receive me once again. We speak a, love, a lot about the love of mother. The love of mother is the greatest love that exists. I'm sorry, but that's not true. The greatest love is the love of the Father. The greatest love is the love of God. Because love, God loved the world in such a way that sent His Son so that whoever believes in may not perish, never die, but have eternal life. And a mother may even forget about her son, but I, I, I the Lord, will never forget about you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God has not forgotten about you, my brother and sister who are in the house of the Lord. And the advice of the Lord for your life is to go back to the fortress. Go back to the presence of God. Because the blood of Jesus has already purified you of all your sins. He's purified me of all my sins. I have been forgiven. And now I can enjoy of being in the fortress of God. It's a very important thing. Many times we're in the fortress of God, in the presence of God, but we do not enjoy of all the, the things that God has done for our lives. I spoke about the prodigious son, but now I'm going to speak about the other son. There are two, two children in the house of the father. One that rebelled and went away, far away, and the other that remained in the house, but didn't enjoy of all the benefits that God, that the Father had for his life. And this son that didn't enjoy for all the benefits uh, while still being in the house of the Father, he didn't participate on the Feast of Salvation. The Father came to him and said, My son, my daughter, all my things are yours. My brethren, you who are in the fortress, do not leave the fortress. Do not leave the presence of God. But look, take advantage of all the good things there are in the fortress. You can eat, you can drink, and be merry. Because the owner of the fortress, the Lord, he has an abundance for all his children. Return to the stronghold, your prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I will res return, restore double to you. How is that possible? Because I left the fortress out of my own volition. Nobody sent me away. Now I go to another place. The situation all is all wrong. But when I return, I am rewarded. Only God can do something like that. It could have been at that day. 
like they say. My mind is, is he could have been reproached that day. He could uh, receive uh, a warning that day. That day, many things could have happened. But at that day, the day when he re had returned to the fort, to the stronghold, the Lord said, uh, "You can return because I will restore double to you." What does it mean to have this double reward? Jesus speaks of something that is very interesting. Jesus said, "Seek ye first the things of the Lord, and all the other things will be added unto you." And those who leave their father and mother, children, for my for the love of me, receive in this life a one hundred times more in the coming century eternal life, my brother and sister. That's what God has for your life. A double reward is a spiritual blessing and blessing the other areas of your life. So there is hope that you and I may have in the Lord because Christ is our hope and Christ in us is a hope of eternal life. So then the advice of the Lord for your life and for my life, go back to the fortress and Because when the prisoners return to the fortress, he is freed. And as the Lord is this, is that you return to the presence of God. Because Jesus wants to free you up. So that you may have a life of freedom in his presence. So that you may be rewarded with salvation. And with the, all the other things that you need for your life. Hallelujah.
Patricia may stand up. Hallelujah. The Lord has shown tonight a man that came to the house of the Lord. He was shackled. And he comes seeking a piece of bread, a word for his life. And the prodigious son, he came for the same reason. He came back because of the bread. He needed of food for his soul. And the Lord tonight is feeding a soul of this brother who enters in the house of the Lord, uh, tied up to a situation, pleading for a blessing, a piece of bread, a word of God for his life. And the word of God for his, your life, my brother, is that you return to the stronghold because there is a reward for you here. There is a blessing for your life. There is deliverance through the blood of Jesus. And the Lord said that he would feed of the bread, but he didn't want to be delivered from, from the cuffs, from the prison. Many times you, we get used to it, to live in a prison. But the desire of the Lord is, is to deliver you tonight. And the advice of the Lord is that you enter into the fortress of the Lord and you will be delivered from these shackles. And you see the freedom, having, having freedom is better, than, is better than to be in prison. And the Lord wants to do tonight this to your life. He wants to deliver from all your shackles, from, from the prison. The Lord also has shown two other people and these two people, they were near to a river of clean waters. And one of these people was well, was healthy, because he was drinking of this water. And the other person was near the water, but that person would not drink of the water. And that person was ill, was sick. But God, my brethren, Jesus doesn't choose a person of another. The water, which is the blessing of the Holy Spirit, which is the Word of God, which is Christ, the fountain of living waters, is now being made available to us. Just need to pick it up and drink. You just need to accept the project of God in your life and that you will be healed. You will be cured. You will be blessed. You have a, a different appearance. Because when Christ is in us, we have a different appearance. There is a test in the Bible that says, the appearance of your face testify against you. Sometimes you look at a person, you see that the situation is not good. You don't even have to say anything. The, uh, their face is showing everything. And now the Lord is showing the, the face of someone here. But my brother and sister, the water is available. The blessing of the Lord is available for your life. Whoever drink of the water that I give will never thirst again. Because it will be made in that person a fountain that will jump to eternal life. Hannah, when she entered into the house of the Lord, her face was filled with sadness. And she received a blessing from the Lord and she left that place happy. Her appearance was already different because on that day she had been blessed by, by the Lord. The thirst of her soul was quenched. The Lord wants to quench the thirst of your soul. God has a reward for you, my brother and sister, a double reward. We just need to take advantage of it. Lord, we bless your holy name. We thank for the fellowship and we ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit may, at this moment, visit us, visit our hearts, and give us what we need, Lord, for this moment, for this day, 
for this instant in our lives. Satisfy our spiritual necessities and also material necessities, reproach and pain and infirmities, deliver us from prisons that may have prevented us from walk with uh, firmness in your presence and make a great operation in this place in our lives and our benefit so that our appearance may be from this day forward be different so that we may have a new walk in your presence Lord so that we may understand that you, are re you have already provided all things that are necessary for our lives allow us to come back in peace to our homes we plead for a blessing in the name of Jesus in the name you say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God our good and eternal Father and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore Amen Amen the church may be seated the service has come to its end and you my brother and sister who are with us desejar uma oração pela sua vida um esclarecimento da palavra, daquilo que foi dito, dos dons que foram transmitidos. Have been delivered. Remain where you are. Raise your hand. We are going to give the proper assistance. And from this day, from this moment forward, you're really invited to return more times. We have a Thursday, uh, a doctrinal service on at eight at night. On Thursday at eight p.m. Also a prayer service on Saturday. We have a service of praise and adoration and evangelization at 7.30. And Sunday morning, we have a Sunday school at 10.30 in the morning. And Sunday night, at the same time, we have at 7.30 uh, another service. You are invited to be with us once again. And I'd like to invite those who are with us that on the March 24th, 10 o'clock in the morning, we're going to have a special event seminar with children, intermediaries, and adolescents. You and your family, your entire home, your friends, they are all invited to be with us, to participate with us and our children, intermediaries, and adolescents. Oh, this event is going to take place at 10 o'clock in the morning of the 24th, on March 24th. And I want to say the peace of the Lord to everyone.